Hey everybody, Jason here from my animate. Hopefully you're all doing fantastic this week. So this week's snippet, we're going to talk about my approach to breakdowns and the window of time. So what do I mean the window of time, right? And, and specifically about breakdowns. Well, if I've got a key on frame one and a key on frame five, my window of time for a breakdown is two, three, and four, those three frames. Right. So I can't do anything too broad between those two keys because it, it's going to be fairly fast. Now, if there's a key on frame five and a key on frame 11, then it gives me a good, a, you know, a basically six frames in between rather than three frames. Right. So I can actually go a little bit broader as a breakdown because I've got a bigger window of time. Right. So whenever, whenever I'm approaching breaking down mechanics, I always try to look at that stuff because um, if I let the computer just in between, between five and 11, it's going to be very slow and even. Right. So I've got a work in progress uh, breakdown shot here, right? There's no polish on this or anything. I'm just trying to use it as sort of an, an explanation here, right? So over here on the on the right here, we have this sort of just just a play blast, right? Of just my keys with lin with, with they're not linear in betweens. They're basically slow in. They're like auto spline, right? So it's just like a uh, a slow in. Uh, to the key, and then it'll just kind of play from there. So it's very, very evenly timed and spaced, right? So in 2D, everything's spaced, right? Everything is uh, spacing, right? So if you look at 2D animation, we can't literally take a drawing, a single drawing, and say offset the timing and offset this and offset that. We have to literally do it in the one drawing. So if we wanted to favor a key to the previous key, uh, what we do is we would make that drawing look similar to that previous drawing, right? So that it ha has the elements of that drawing more so than the one that we're actually going towards, right? So in other words, if we're looking here between uh, this pose and this pose here, right? So between one and five, these are this is the two keys with basically linear in-betweens, right? So they're very evenly timed. So like on frame one, that's the key, the contact pose, and then frame five is the squash, right? So in here, I would say this foot coming down is way too slow. I want that to favor the pose on the ground. So by frame three, I want that pose on the ground, right? So I will go in on my breakdowns here on the left, and make sure that this foot hits on frame three, right? So that's favoring, right? Now, if you look at the arm position here and the arm position here, it looks similar, right? But if we watch it, right, it basically just sort of in-betweens from this high position here with the elbow up uh, down to here, right? And the arm, the, the hand sort of just kind of comes up and sort of rotates around, which isn't bad, but it might be a little bit slow, right? And if I want to make that a little bit more snappy, what I would do is favor the arm still going up and maybe go beyond that pose and then come back, right? So if I look over here on the left-hand side, you see that I'm actually trying to make this hand go a little bit higher here and then start to rotate down into that next pose, into frame five. Right, which is that pose right there, right? Same thing with the with the uh, his left arm, the one in the back there. Like um, I can see here, like you know where where it's actually going. Right, it goes from there, and then it goes to there, and it almost stops right here, and then starts to come forward. So on the breakdown on frame three, I want that arm to go a little higher, right? So it actually continues through, and then starts to come forward, like into our next pose, right? So that's what I mean by favoring, okay? Now the body, the actual body itself, I know, you know from this actual walk that it's coming from a pose, right? Because it's a cycle. And so we're coming up to an up position then we're coming down or we're transitioning. We're using like the contact as almost like a, a transitional pose. So I know that to get a little bit more weight, I want to transition that body down a little bit sooner, right? So I'm basically taking the body and making it closer to the bottom frame so i get a little bit more of the character taking the weight right which works out well now for breakdowns like for let's have a look on, on the feet here i know because we have a foot roll going on which we're all familiar with 
Uh, and when you take off, like you, you don't want the foot to uh, to still be bent like this, like right? because it's in the air here, but it makes it look like it's still contacting. So I want to be able to get the, the toes back. So I want to bring the toes back down to the ground. So it's sort of get a little bit more of a push off, right? So by frame five, uh, right here, this is sort of straight up, almost like perpendicular to the ground. So this is where the, the toe is actually going to leave the ground, right? So over here in the breakdowns, I want to favor that pose so it still feels like it's on the ground, okay? And then it starts to come up and drag behind, right? And then we get a little bit of a drag right there, right? Uh, as far as like the, uh, the over, oh, so the next key, like from five, the next key I think was frame 11. If you kind of go through it, this is, yeah. So, so there's where the change in direction is, right? So you can tell that that's a key because it's sort of like the up and it's going to start to change direction here. So in this one, because there is so many uh, frames in between, like there's six frames, right? So we got five, you got six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, right? So we got eleven. That's your, your your key there. So I've got a bigger window of time to do something, right? So what I wanted to do here is actually let the character go a little bit beyond the bottom. So I'm favoring that bottom pose before I start to come back up, and then. What I'm doing is favoring the up pose. So I'm making the transition from the bottom to the top a lot faster by taking the in-betweens, those in-between frames, sending a key and then dragging it down closer to the frame number, right? So that it feels spacing wise, like it's spending a little bit more time at the bottom and then a faster transition and then a little bit more time at the top. So it takes the evenness out. And that's where my breakdowns, like where, where the animation really comes alive.